Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Junkies. I'm Ken. I'm Chris. Today, Chris is going to teach everyone how to be a good collector and not be like me, and how not to go wide with your collecting habits. Yeah, um, there's different kyle, the different styles of collecting, right? You can be the guy that collects everything, if, or you can be mm-hmm. focused, right? One thing that I learned is if you go too wide, you can never. It's it's really hard to get those really expensive key grail books. You have to right. have increasing income that matches Just your scale sale, of right. collection, right? I mean, unless you unless you make a crap ton of money, you right. can buy whatever you want. But regular right. people... You guys click that like and subscribe, we might be able to do that one day. <laughs> we might be able to afford some, <laughs> some more books. But as a regular person um, who has a budget and gets mm-hmm. yelled for overspending every once in a while, you have to focus to get your goals for mm-hmm. your personal collection. If you see a new shiny thing every week yeah. um, and you spend your money on that, it's harder to get to that goal. Or you just say, well, maybe I'll just never get that goal, right? Mm-hmm. I'll never get that book because I'll never be able to save for it. It's harder to save for it if you uh, buy every variant, buy yep. every issue that's new. If you have a hold slot, right? I think, Ken, you have a hold slot. And how much do you spend a week? <laughs> I spend probably eighty to ninety dollars on new books every week. Just new books to read. I'm right? a I'm a guy that funds the industry <laughs> for variant variant covers. You got me. I'll take them all. Oh, shinier the better. I I have that too. Everything everyone, Harley. Everyone. Yeah, so well. I get off. I I get on all these books. Right. I got on my Sweet Africa. Right. And I bought two different covers to the book and. My my hold slot is specific to things that I'm going to flip or have potential mm. value, right? Not just every X-Men story <laughs> that's out there. I'll, I get I'll, it all. I'll buy, I'll buy the, the trade after. So being able to focus on a goal for your collection, say, I want these key grail book first appearances of something or books that are just really expensive, like in the thousands of dollars per book. If you take your average person, he's in this hobby, it's, it's going to it's some of those books are pipe dream like even for like amazing fantasy 15 right that's a grail for like 90 percent of people 99 i would say Mm -hmm. (laughs) who are in this hobby so when i try to acquire different grails there's usually a process that i go through it's one focus right like Mm -hmm. i said um don't try to buy everything under the sun um know what you want to get right is it Daredevil number one, Ken? No. <laughs> Are you out of that? Maybe? Maybe no. you'll get back into it? It wasn't even cool until Miller touched the book. So focus and know what you want to get. Um, and then know your budget, right? What can you reasonably start saving um, mm-hmm. towards this goal? That needs to be an honest budget. Right. It can't, I mean, sometimes you, if, depending on what your... Um, situation is right yeah you maybe you can only save like ten dollars a week right towards this mm-hmm. right or maybe you have a lot of disposable income and you can spend two three hundred dollars a week right or save mm-hmm. towards it right it just if you have your goal in sight and you know your budget it's just math right mm-hmm. if my book is going to cost me five thousand dollars and i can only save a hundred dollars a week you know that's it'll take you whatever the math is <laughs> to yeah. get there right as long as you stick to that it's obtainable you just have to be realistic with yourself right mm-hmm. so that's your budget um also it, maybe there's other ways to find like to to pay for it right maybe you're flipping books maybe you're making money off of other things that you have in your collection that you can sell right maybe you have um things that have risen in value right that you don't necessarily care about as much as that grail right magic cards <laughs> or you have another hobby that you can liquidate um and 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 put it towards this hobby for that grill right it's a, it's a, a game of assets right so you have right. to increase your assets somehow right one way is by saving your money and adding it right that might take a little longer another way is by adding to those funds whether it's by liquidating something, something else. else right you might have a you might have a book in your collection that you have no 
ties to you have you don't care anything about it mm -hmm. like i just did i i had a moon knight book from scotty young just yeah. because i was collecting a bunch of scotty young i got it graded i paid i paid cover price three bucks for it mm -hmm. um it sold for nine hundred dollars right so three three dollars twenty dollar grading fee and shipping sold it for nine hundred dollars right and that was just because it was a book in my collection that i just happened to look through and saw prices on ebay and i was like oh my god i need to flip this book you take this hawkeye and sell it is that the is that the you first take one? this hawkeye and sell it <laughs> like i've been telling him to get it graded <laughs> I, didn't and sell even, it. I didn't even know because that was there <laughs> when this series pops off all of this hawkeye stuff is gonna balloon in price maybe and he doesn't care this much about this i hawkeye have i have cover. no time it was just good for my background wall yeah. it's behind the pole <laughs> he doesn't even see it um, but maybe it'll be a Moon Knight <laughs> in disguise, right? Maybe it'll go to a nine hundred dollar book, and I just pay cover, and it's just sitting there. Yeah. But you might have a book, a Diamond in the Rough, right? That you can go sell to help fund for that key. I did that with Afra. Oh really? Right. I had that Dark Vader, the first appearance of Afra, and oh. I collected the Dark Vader series, but it was such a good flip. Yeah. Like Five hundred bucks graded to go to something you actually cared about. Yeah. So like, I just sold it, got it graded, sold it purchased another raw mm -hmm. copy for like a hundred bucks and then I had like 500 400 bucks to go spend on other books I wanted to buy for your personal collection yeah I think that's how I bought that back girl adventures that First Harley Quinn yeah which was a key for me so go through your collection go do your do your homework mm -hmm. right go look and see what comps are on eBay what people are selling for raw or graded depending how and see if you can let some stuff go towards you know to sell to, to go towards the ground and you might find a surprise there's right. a lot of things that you i didn't realize that afro book was that high right. i really like the character i told everyone to get on her solo series etc right i didn't think her first appearance was going for anything more than like five or ten bucks until i found out right and so, same with that scotty young moon knight right like no don't know anything about moon knight just yeah. had the, just happened to have the book Side note, you should be reading Moon Knight because the new <laughs> series is fantastic. I can guarantee you in like two weeks, he'll tell you about it and how cool it is after I'll, I let him read it. I'll read it after the Disney Plus show comes out <laughs> and then I can see what that character is about. Um, so that's another thing, right? You can, you might be able to find ways to, to sell something to put towards that grill. Um, so I fund and flip, right? Flip it, flip mm -hmm. books. Um, so as long as you know what you have or what you want, and you have that goal, and you're not spending your your budget like too wide, um, you can start putting it towards things that you actually know you want to keep forever, right? How did you fund this book? So um, here is X-Men number 14, mm -hmm. uh, first appearance of the Sentinels, um, really early X-Men book. Um, I funded this uh, when I started to start, when I started selling magic cards. Um, so I had a huge magic collection, uh, wanted to get out of the game, been playing it for with you for mm -hmm. nine, eight years, yeah. something like that, seven years. Uh, started liquidating that and putting it into this hobby. Um, so after doing some of that liquidation, um, I started collecting X-Men keys, right? Um, key books that I know that were going to be um, growing in the future or just things that I really wanted in my collection, right? Yeah. I wanted X-Men stuff. X-Men is my favorite um, brand name. <laughs> of superhero um, that's what I grew up in the 90s right I watched all the cartoons um, I bought all those Jim Lee X-Men cards yeah, right yeah. X-Men was my jam it's um, so, so good right now this book X-Men is so good right now for anyone not reading it it's the current series it's probably the third best X-Men run of all time see I don't know because I am focusing my money towards really so big good. purchases so good yeah so I liquidated a lot of magic cards uh, to start funding this part of the hobby. It, it made sense at the time because uh, we weren't playing a lot, COVID had hit, um, prices were still pretty low before like the huge explosion of prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got in at a good time. Um, so I ended up getting um, a bunch of things that I had always wanted, right? Things that were out of my price range because I wasn't in this hobby as deep as I am now. Mm -hmm. um, so I started focusing my magic budget yeah um my other budgets um i have a hobbies in cars and games yeah <laughs> um and guns right mm -hmm. i i basically can't say that on youtube oh sorry not guns um pew pews yeah right airsoft guns <laughs> that shoot bullets <laughs> um so i started focusing all of that budget uh onto this one hobby so i mm -hmm. i took out all of my expenditures and put into this hobby mm -hmm. um, to get these grails. 
Um, so here is X-Men number four, the first appearance of um, Quicksilver, and um, I guess, you know, a small character, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. She's kind of a, a big deal. It's funny that she, so the, you have the first appearance of Scarlet Witch and the first appearance of the Sentinels, and when they rebooted the series, like on the inside cover of, and it might have been House of X or Powers of X, they mm-hmm. list like the greatest enemies of mutants. Oh, really? And so like number one's like Bolivar Trask, who killed like 14 oh, million yeah, mutants, yeah. right? And then number two, it says the Great Pretender, and it's Wanda. <laughs> really? Yeah, because like no more mutants. mutants. She like She's wiped out 900,000. And then they wonder why someone killed her. Yeah, I mean, she was also good in her Disney Plus show. <laughs> I mean, you wipe out 900,000 mutants and you show up at their island. What do you expect? Yeah. Um, and then after flipping a whole bunch of books, um, so I got, I ended up going through my collection. I ended up finding things that... I initially had to fork up more money for it to, you know, get graded. Um, but then I ended up getting a run of, I don't know, like 20 books, my very first CGC submission. Um, things that I knew had value that I could flip really easily and get money towards um, a grail book that I had wanted forever. Um, so here is my expense number one probably my biggest grail that I had acquired so far mm-hmm. um, just by focusing all my money uh, so just my budget from other hobbies and after um, selling a bunch of the graded books that I had no ties to didn't care about them they just happened to be in my long boxes um, I ended up was I was able to pick up X-Men number one um, and all these other keys and so now ever since I got down this path of collecting X-Men keys um, and staying really focused on X-Men I have this whole wall uh, up here, you guys might be able to see, um, of first appearances um, throughout the ages of X-Men. You gotta get the other X-Men keys. Like, the, you, you know how the first appearance of Maggot? <laughs> so, I guess... First appearance of Marrow. I guess that's, I guess that's a, good, um, a good segue, right? First appearance of the Morlocks. When you, when you focus and you know what you want to buy, mm-hmm. you have to... It has to be a reason, right? Mm-hmm. So, sure, I can go do the same process where I focus all my budget, try to flip some stuff, you know, buy low, sell high, you know, and try to get mm-hmm. X-Men number two. But I don't care about the first person of, <laughs> of what was his, what's his name? It's not Vision. Um, the guy which that teleports. Which one's like? The Vanisher. I don't know. I mean, I know who the Vanisher is because I've read it, mm-hmm. right? But he, I, I have no ties to him. All right? I don't really care. He's not that, that I wonder what his second appearance is. <laughs> the Vanisher number two? Who maybe knows? Maybe he just vanished. <laughs> right. See? So, yeah, I could maybe... My goal is not to get the run. Yeah. Right? My goal is to get the keys. The mm-hmm. keys that mean something to me. And number two doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and so that's how I collect. Right? I collect by focusing on what I want and, and then having a plan to execute. Mm-hmm. I can't just go willy-nilly buying everything. Um, even if I wanted to get the the whole run of X-Men, that's not my goal, mm-hmm. right? I just want the things that mean, have value to me for my personal collection, yeah. right? Because um, even if I started collecting the whole run, that would just be something that I don't care about. And it would be equivalent to buying a bunch of modern stuff that, you know, that I don't have any, I don't, I don't care about either. The right? first appearance of Maggot. <laughs> right, I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I focus and buy grails uh, for my PC. I set a goal, I set a budget, um, I tried to make more money by flipping, and then I put that towards that, that grail. And sometimes it takes a long time, um, sometimes it doesn't. And, I, and then I also look for deals. I don't pull the trigger right away. Mm-hmm. I try to find really good deals on eBay. That's my primary source of buying these big books, because it's not, I mean, you can't really just walk up to your local store and say, hey, go give me an X-Men number one out of your back, your back closet, right? Um, they're not, there's not a whole bunch on the market at any one time, yeah. right? And then specifically a grades, right? Grade grade difference or expense are to t- dictate the price. Like a 3 0 is out of my budget, right? And then I so I was really picky if I'm spending that much money, right? I want no chipping, right? I want to see what kind of what what are what are my options in this mm-hmm. budget, right, for this book. Um, mm-hmm. so I have to do a lot of research. Um, it's and then be patient, even if you have the money, right? You don't want to buy the first one that shows up because no. it could just it could look like toilet paper, right? Mm-hmm. It could present really badly, 
like a two five range is That's so wide range. right you could have anything like under five right when you start getting under five even six is a little sketchy there's a lot of ways that something can earn that grade right. right. water stains tears right. it's not just a stamp cut out right um there's so many things that can be wrong with the book when you start getting down like that whole chunks of it missing yeah so that's what that process took me a while and then after i found this book that i real after i found this copy on ebay it was for auction it was so nerve-wracking because i was trying to i had a, i wanted to win this auction yeah. right and so um, i tried to snipe it it kept going up even before the auction i was like Shh, it's i really am going to pull the trigger on this uh -huh. right and i had the, i had the money i had saved up um and i knew what my budget was and if i set the price ceiling right mm -hmm. and if it went over it then so be it it wasn't meant to be right there would be more to come so yeah. don't don't let fomo also ruin it for you right there are plenty of opportunities out there it's not a one of one right there are so many on you can check on the census for the book that you're looking for how many there are right yeah. um but yeah let's re recap um recap step one know what you want mm -hmm. have that goal in mind step two um know your budget so you can save towards that step three um don't go too wide so don't buy things that you don't necessarily need or want even though it's shiny step four find the good deals for a the other thing that you could do <laughs> if you don't want if you want to skip all of this let's go back for <laughs> right. a uh -huh. <laughs> Is um, just charge out your credit card. <laughs> Take out a whole every line of credit. Sell so your car. <laughs> Robin, for your money. Yeah, blood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that too saves your life. <laughs> yep, plenty of ways to get that girl book out there. <laughs> um, yeah, the girl, nothing is impossible. As long as you have a goal and a plan to get there, just like anything in life, right? It's not just comic books. So if you like this guys, uh, this comic book content, this kind of talk, uh, like, like, subscribe, uh, comment down below. Tell us what you guys want to hear from us. You guys, you care. Thanks guys, see you next time.